Hi, Kids Time friends. Miss Bird here with Kristen and Laura. Hi. Hi. We miss you all and we hope you guys are all doing well and having loads of fun at home and that you guys are all staying safe and healthy. Oh, and being super nice to your parents. Right, girls? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, we certainly have missed you and we have a lot of fun things for you today. We're going to start off by opening in prayer because you guys are all awesome redeemed kids. You girls ready? Yeah. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for all of these awesome redeemed kids, their wonderful families, their friends, our church, our pastors, and all of those who could just join us today. We lift you up with all of the thanks and praise and we just Hope that you are blessing each and every one of us, keeping us healthy and safe and blessing those who are just battling with the virus and with other health issues. And we lift all of those up in prayer who just can't be with their loved ones right now. And we just want you to bless all of us and keep our hearts and our minds uh, looking up to you, Lord. In your name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. All right. We are so glad that you're here watching us today. And we have some really cool things for you. Um, today we're going to talk about something new. And that's the armor of God. And there are so many cool things about the armor of God. And the t one that we're going to talk about today is the belt of truth. So let's dive in. All right. So... Um, our story begins in Jesus' time, way back when, and in those ancient days, and we're in the book of Ephesians, and Peter was a disciple of Jesus's, and he was talking about how wonderful Jesus was, and that he was actually God, and all the people were listening to Peter and the other um disciples but you know what some people didn't want to listen to that so let's take a look and see what we're talking about the armor of god talks about a soldier and here's what a soldier looks like a soldier's armor and the kinds of things that we need to do to stand strong for god so a soldier has a helmet and a breastplate and a shield and a belt and a sword and shoes and we're going to talk about all of these cool things and today we're talking about the belt of truth now um, what are some true things that we know about Jesus that he was what he died on the cross that's true yeah he died on the cross that is true and was he born um, yes yes, yes. Uh, and he saved our sins. And he saved our sins. That's right. Very good. Okay. So um, let's start in the book of Ephesians. And I'm going to read Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 12 in my trusty Bible here. All right. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Wow, that's pretty powerful stuff, huh? That means that we always need to be on our guard because who is always working against us? The devil. The devil. The devil. That's right. And what's another word for the devil? Um. Starts with an S. I forget. <laughs> Satan. Oh, Satan. Yeah, that's right. All right. So um, how does it make you feel when you hear that we're fighting against these unseen evil rulers? Like sad. Sad? Sad. Does it kind of make you feel unprepared? Yeah. It feels a little bit uncom uncomfortable. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So knowing that we have this armor of God, does it make you feel a little bit more prepared? Yes. Yeah, knowing that you have this like power inside of you mm -hmm. that kind of arms you to go into battle uh -huh. for that what you believe in. That's pretty cool, huh? All right. So um, the verses that we read tell us to stand 
firm. The devil is always out there working against us, so we need to be prepared. So Peter was doing just that. So let's hear what Peter did and what he used. So we're talking about verse uh, 14 here in chapter 6. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place. All right. So the belt of truth. Very good. All right. So we're talking about truth here and Peter spreading a message of truth about Jesus and what he is. And so we're going to spread a little message today. And huh. My message involves something that I love very much, and that's pizza. Do you girls love pizza? Yes. yes. Oh, boy. So do I. So why don't you both tell me how much you love pizza? I love pizza because you can get it in all different flavors, and it's so cheesy if you like the cheese one. Mm-hmm. I like the pineapple one because it's really good. Yeah? And we... And it's really fun to eat because it's sometimes greasy and it's fun to play Okay, with stop food. talking about pizza. We're supposed to be talking about Jesus. Okay. Okay. I mean, really? Pizza? And you're... We're talking about Jesus here and you're just going on and on and on about pizza? Please. Okay. All right, so... Well, that was that, I guess. Laura's just going on and on and on about pizza, and we're trying to have a lesson here about Jesus and the, you know, belt of truth, but she just wants to keep talking about pizza. <laughs> Who knows? Oh, well. Okay. Sorry. How did it make you feel when I told you to stop talking about pizza? Sad because I love pizza too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How did it make you feel when I told Laura to stop talking about pizza? Same, sad. Why? Because I really like pizza. Okay. So, you know what? This was an analogy, and that means I was using pizza to tell you about something that happened to Peter. Now, the same thing happened to Peter. No, not pizza. He wasn't talking about pizza, but he was talking about Jesus. And he was talking about him so much that these mean people didn't understand what he was talking about. They were called the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they threw Peter and his friends in jail. Ah! And they said, stop talking about pizza. Oop. Jesus. And they threw him in jail. And they kept him there and they didn't want to let him out. So, when that happened... Peter couldn't talk about Jesus anymore. So let's move on to uh, Acts and see what happened. All right, so now we're in Acts chapter 5. The high priest and all of his associates were members of the party of the Sadducees, and they were filled with jealousy because Peter was talking so much about Jesus and how Jesus was God. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail, but during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go stand in the temple courts and tell the people the full message of the new life. Whoa. How does that make you feel? Like happy because the people got out. Yeah. Wow. The power of God is amazing that the angel of the Lord came down and opened the doors. Didn't we just hear a message about that a couple weeks ago? What else was opened? Um, the grave. That's right, the tomb of the Jesus. Tomb. That's really cool. Okay, so Peter got out and they went to the temple courts and they started talking about Jesus again. Oh, do you think people were super excited about this? No. <laughs> Some were because they wanted to hear about Jesus. But those... So Evil people, they yeah, were don't not. Like Jesus. Yep, they were not. So, hmm, they arrested Peter again. Oh my goodness, and they threw him in jail. Let's see what happens. But on arriving at the jail, the officers found him there, and they went, they didn't find them there, and they went back and reported. We found the jail securely locked with the guards standing at the doors, and when we went to open them, we found no one inside. 
On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priest were puzzled, wondering what had came of this. And then someone said, look, the men you put in jail are standing at the temple courts. The captain went with the officers and brought the apostles and they used force or they did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. So then they threw them in jail again and Kristen is going to go ahead and read Acts chapter 29. Um, Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, whom you have killed by hanging him on a tree. God exclaimed him to his own right hand. As a prince and savior, um, that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are witness of these things and so in the Holy Spirit whom God has given the whole those who obey him all right so Peter and his friends knew that we fight evil with truth and but they were on trial so do they deserve to be punished what do you guys think no, no? but the Sadducees no. think that they should be punished yeah. so how should we punish them the religious leaders wanted to kill Peter and his friends does that seem kind of harsh? Yes. Oh my gosh. Ugh. Wow. But one religious leader, and let me see, let me get this name right. Gamaliel, he had a really good point. So let's read on Acts chapter 38. Therefore, verse 38. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go. For... For if they pur pur purpose or actions of is of human organ will fail, but if but if it will is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find your savior slaves fighting against you. Oh my goodness! So if their actions are from humans, oh, then they can't. They can do something but if they're fighting if their actions are from God then they can't do anything so do you think Peter's actions are from God of course they are right he's spreading the word of Jesus who is God so now what do you think the punishment should be what do you think they're thinking about should they still kill them no no remember we're back in Jesus's time ancient times you really don't have a lot of options. So, do you think the religious leaders took Gamaliel's advice? Yeah. Yeah? Do you think they want to kill them or not? No. No. No, they don't. But they couldn't let them off scot-free. So, they did flog them. And Peter's and his friends rejoiced in this fact. Now... Do you know what flogging is? Like when you maybe hit somebody with a rope. Yep. Yep, that's right. In the back. And But why do you think Peter was excited about this? Because he thought so that he didn't have to die, but he at least um, getting flogged is not so bad as dying. That's right. Being that's killed. right. Very good. So let's read our last verse. Um, the apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they have been counting worthy of suffering disgrace from the name. And day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. Wow! Did Peter and his friends, was all of their effort in vain no they kept their belt of truth on and they persevered and they were successful so friends we fight evil with truth which is our belt of truth that protection is always there friends and to remind us of that we have a craft for you i sent an email to your parents and you can do this 
as a reminder that when you are scared or lonely or you need a reminder to fight those evils, you can pull out this craft to help you remember. So Kristen is gonna talk about her first craft. So this is the first craft. It, this one is when I'm sad. This one is Jesus loves me. This one's when I am scared. This one is when Jesus is with me. This is when I am mad. And this one is when Jesus helps me. This is a really fun craft. I, I like doing it. Awesome. All right, and Laura has our second craft. This is called a truth catcher. So um, what you can do is like you just put your thumbs in here and go like that. And then you're just gonna pick a number through one and ten. And then you can do this with a friend or a, fa a family member. And you're just gonna go like one, two, three, four. And you're just gonna pick like, cause there's heaven, there's swimming, there's church, there's school, there's art. So maybe you can pick like one like school and then you spell out S C H O O L. And then you pick another one, like I'll pick swimming, and you just open the swimming, and there's a little... And you read the Bible verse. And you read the little passage of that Bible verse, and yeah. Oh, wow, and it doesn't make you feel better? Uh-huh. That's right, and are all these things that you wrote in here the safe places that you like? Uh-huh. That's great, and did you decorate it with little belts? Uh-huh, because it's called the truth of the, the, the belt. That's awesome. Way to go, girls. That So you guys can do that at home. All right, so we're going to go ahead and close our session here with the Lord's Prayer. All right. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a wonderful day. Hope we Bye. We miss you. Hope you stay safe and healthy, and hope we can see you soon.